Hello, this is T Chapman 500, and in this video, I am again going to be attempting to win at my own racetrack. So, if you haven't seen the previous video, I recommend watching that before you watch this one. Anyways, let's get into attempt number six. This race started like any other at this track. We drove off of pit road to accelerate to a speed of 100 miles an hour to get to the start finish line. It was quite uneventful. We came back around to the entrance of pit road and the pace car went off into pit lane to allow us to take the green. So we're just gonna wait a few more seconds for the leader to reach the starting box and... Green flag! So remember that acceleration issue I'm having with the AI? Well, apparently I'm still having it because I got a very good run on the start. Well, I didn't get too much of a good run because I'm not in the lead right now. Still, I managed to get to second before turn one. Well, I suppose that if I don't gain 10 rows worth of positions before turn one, then I did a pretty good job. And it looks like we have a new leader. Well, this race was pretty uneventful. Here's my first pit stop of the race at about lap 25, or slightly before lap 25. I really need to work on those braking points, and so do the AI, except the AI brake exactly where I tell them to which definitely won't come back to bite me later on in this video. Seriously, the pit stops are the number one scariest part to this race. The second scariest part is having a pack of three and four wide traffic approaching lapped traffic that's traveling at 100 miles an hour slower. Perhaps I'm getting too comfortable when I'm not in the pack or on pit road. You can see right here I bumped the wall, which has damaged the race car and slowed it down. It might not look like much, but trust me, I am no longer capable of winning this race. Here we're coming off of turn 4 with 91 laps to go, and uh, well, I just zone out slightly at 250 miles an hour and the rest is history. Yellow flag is out, and the car can no longer continue in the race. That's what those two red lights indicate on the dashboard. If the previous bump with the wall just slightly slowed me down, this thing took me out of the race completely. I got the green flag for attempt number 7 and things seem to be going pretty well. I haven't wrecked yet. Then again, I hardly ever wreck right after the start finish line. Unless it's on lap 2 in turn 1. As you can see, I got the lead before turn 1. Now basically after every attempt, I've been tweaking the balance of the track. The tire wear, tire temperature, etc. And well, I've also been trying a few different strategies on the track. You know, your position at the beginning of the race doesn't really matter all that much. What matters is your position at the end of the final lap. That will make or break the race for you. Literally. Of course, there are other things that can break the race for you, but we don't talk about those things. Only positive things are allowed. Oh, I just wrecked. Oh right, we don't talk about those things. Moving past attempt number 7, I got the green flag for attempt number 8, and we did well. We didn't wreck before the start-finish line or even after the start finish line, and I'm already taking the lead right before even the end of the second bend of the front stretch. And I'm in the lead well before turn one. Here's what saving your tires does to your race. Well, this isn't really much since it's what, lap 10, 15? Not even the first pit stop has gone by yet, so it's hard to say how much this will cost me in the long run. Actually, I seriously doubt 15 laps have gone by yet. Maybe 10 but definitely not 15. I'm not really sure that I like this iteration of this tire balance. The pack's not supposed to split up like this. Now it's gonna take a while for me to catch up to the lead pack. Oh, by the way, when I said we only talk about positive things here, I was joking. We also talk about the negative. Plus it makes for great content. Pit road speed limit here is 70 miles an hour and you'd better not be so much as one mile an hour above it. The penalty for speeding on pit road under green flag conditions is that you have to drive through pit road without stopping. Here I'm doing just that. Oh, and if you're caught speeding again, then you will have to stop. And at a track like this, just a single black flag is capable of ending your hopes of winning. And if you get two black flags, well, you can just forget about winning. Or even finishing on the lead lap. But fortunately for me, the yellow flag came out before the leaders could come and lap me, so now I still have a chance at winning the race. The same cannot be said for anyone involved in the wreck that brought out the caution. Oh, and if you thought pitting under green flag conditions was scary, 
Try pitting under yellow flag conditions with half the field ahead of you and half the field behind you. By the way, that's another black flag, which in this case means I just have to go to the end of the longest line. And this is going to be yet a third black flag for unsafe entry back onto pit road. Don't worry, you don't get any additional penalties for unsafe exit from pit road and then unsafe entry on the same caution period. You just get sent to the end of the longest line. So as we get ready to take the green flag, I'm keeping my distance to the car ahead of me because it has significant damage and will be a lot slower than me. As long as I pass on the outside before the start finish line, I'm fine. So long as I don't pass while the race is still technically under caution, I have to wait till the green flag to pass. Within a few laps, I had finally caught up to the leaders. That caution flag and subsequent restart really broke up the pack. Oh, and I am now back in the lead. Everything was going well until after the second green flag pit stop when I hit another race car. That ended my chances of winning this race. I didn't even last until the first pit stop on attempt number 9. As you can see, I got rammed by the entire pack entering pit road. I'm doing pretty well for attempt number 10. We've passed the first pit stop and we have only a few laps left to the second pit stop, especially now that the caution's out, because the AI somehow wrecked. Now, unfortunately, I did not win the race to the starting line to take the caution, so I'm gonna have to follow the 20 car all the way around the track, which is no big deal. Except that I don't trust the pack to slow down safely when they catch the pace car. Fortunately, nobody crashed while lining up behind the pace car, so we made our second pit stop under yellow. Yellow flag pit stops aren't nearly as nerve-wracking when you're towards the front of the line of cars that are pitting than when you're in the middle or towards the back. And as you can see here, I won the race off of pit road. NASCAR rules for restarts in 2003 was widely different from what we have today. Back then, the lapped cars used to line up to the inside of the lead lap cars, and well, I'm not quite sure what the purpose of that was, but it generally makes for some interesting racing on this simulator. Especially when you're at a track like this one where the pack goes full throttle all the way around and the slightest amount of damage will mean you're going to be holding up the entire field. Now the rule in this simulator is that the leader of the line of lap down cars is not allowed to pass the leader of the race before the green flag. In real life, the leader of the line of lap down cars would not be able to pass the race leader until after the start finish line. Now, between most of the attempts I've been making, I've been tweaking the tire wear and tire heating parameters to try and make sure things are balanced and realistic. Actually, realism is the goal here, and I'm not quite sure what would be most realistic, because cars really don't go around tracks at 250 miles per hour. But I'm pretty sure, looking back on this, that the tire wear and heating parameters were set too high for this racetrack. While I did achieve my goal of getting the packs to break up, I have since decided that that would be unrealistic for this racetrack. Plus, the AI have become quite the safety hazard with these settings. Which is less than ideal when traveling around a racetrack at almost 260 miles an hour. By the way, if you're wondering how I put in the grandstands, I use the trial version of 3DS Max 8 on a Windows XP virtual machine that I have to reset every 30 days. But lately, for some reason, the 3DS Max 8 trial software seems to think it's expired the moment it gets installed. So I really can't do anything else until I get that issue resolved. Of course, if I make my own pass exporter, then I won't need to reset a virtual machine every 30 days just to be able to create 3D objects for NR2003. Anyways, we're making green flag pit stops again, and as you can see, I overshot my pit box, which means I have to back up, which is gonna cost me a little bit of time. Well, I suppose it didn't cost me too much time. See that 48 hidden behind the 20? That is the race leader. The 20 car is in second place. I am currently in third. Um, make that second. And make that first. But that could have turned out a lot worse for me. I could have ended up losing the lead pack entirely. And if that would have happened, then I would have needed to wait for a caution in order to catch back up. And here I am, pitting with 30 laps to go on a track with a pit window of 28 laps. This might not end well. 
Yeah, out of desperation, I started letting a couple of cars by so that I could draft off of them and hopefully save fuel. But it's gonna prove to not be enough. And I almost knocked myself out of the race when I gave the 20 car a little bit of a bump draft going into turn 1. Actually, I was hoping the 20 car would cause a wreck and that would give me the opportunity to do a yellow flag pit stop so that I wouldn't lose any positions. Or at least I could regain them in the remaining laps. That didn't happen, so now I'm getting really desperate. So I decided to take out the 48 car in hopes that that would cause a caution. Which it didn't. Which surprised me. And now I'm getting really, really desperate. Plus that stunt slowed me down quite a bit. Fortunately, I don't have any damage on my race car. Yet. So I decided to just draft off of the 88 car. I might be planning to do something a little bit more than just draft him. Unfortunately, in NR 2003, you tend to stick to the car you're bumping. Just like this. And now I have absolutely no hope of winning the race. Good job. Oh, and by the way, did I mention that there's no caution? Well, I made sure that there was, but I decided to cut out the resulting crash. So here we are on attempt number 11, and you might notice that I have a new paint scheme. Yeah, I changed it. One of the reasons I changed it was because I don't want bit shoot on my race car anymore. Why not? Well, as it turns out, bit shoot is run by lying grifters who want you to believe that it costs $50,000 a month to run a decent website. They also gave in to demands of special interest groups to censor unpopular opinions. So they're no longer a free speech platform, even though they still market themselves as such. Oh, I also made a few changes to the track.ini file to make sure that the race started in the restart box where it's supposed to. Oh, and by the way, I took the lead before turn 1. I also set the tire heating parameters a bit too high. It's lap 2 or 3 and we are already overheating our tires. By the way, the AI really doesn't know how to deal with this situation, so they end up slowing down, which creates a racing hazard for the player if they start towards the back. As you can see from the standings display, the field is quite spread out for a super speedway, and it's only going to get worse as the race goes on. So I really goofed on the tire heating and tire wear parameters. And here comes the caution. There it is. Yellow flag is out. I did not cause it. The AI caused it because they cannot drive safely with such high tire temperatures. I suppose it's not safe for me either to drive with tire temperatures this high, but at least I'm not checking up in the turns. Here's a replay of the incident. I'm probably going to be showing more replays from here on out. As you can see, the 88 gets into the 38 and it all goes downhill from there and also a few other cars get collected. It's actually pretty normal for only a few cars to be involved in a wreck that happens in the corners because the momentum of the cars push everything to the outside wall while the rest of the traffic stays on the bottom half of the racetrack even while running three wide. Oh and by the way, this crash isn't over yet. As you can see, somebody got flipped over a few times. And now we're going to have to contend with several of these cars for the rest of the race. Here's another view of an incident that happened between the 20 and 48 car. Yeah, that could cause some damage to both of those cars, but the AI cheat. By the way, I won the race off of pit road. Here we come for the restart on the restart box. Green flag. This restart was pretty uneventful. By the way, one of the advantages of this red paint scheme, especially on the hood, is that if the car gets even the slightest amount of damage, I'll be able to see it. I'm not quite sure what I was thinking here, but for some reason, I took out the 24 car. Oh, and Jeff Gordon was my favorite. Oh, and somehow the engine is still running after that incident, and I am safely off the racing surface and into the wall. Because of the AI parameter rebalancing, I decided to do another qualifying run to see how I stack up against the new AI balancing for qualifying. I'm thinking I'm going to have to rebalance it again. Also, do not, I repeat, do not look at the remaining time in this video. So we're coming to get the green for attempt number 12 and the restart was pretty uneventful, as is usual for this race. 
Actually, it's quite usual for me to have uneventful starts and restarts for any racetrack. I temporarily lost the lead to the 88 car, but don't worry, I'll gain it back. And even if I don't, I have something like 120 laps to do so. And as you can see, I'm already doing it. This white and red line marks the boundary between the racing surface and the apron. The apron must be used when you're coming off of pit road, but if you use it while you're racing, well, you might end up losing the lead like what I'm doing here. It can also end your race quite quickly if you don't get back onto the racing surface properly. Three wide on the outside is not a good place to be at this track, especially if you lose track of where the other cars are. I didn't even make it to the first green flag pit stop and I'm already out of the race. Note that it is not recommended for you to smash the car roof first into the double layer safer barrier at 210 miles an hour. So that's basically how that attempt ended, and of course I get hit one more time before coming to rest. I also hit the wall one more time before coming to rest. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll probably be making another one of these videos pretty soon, because I really, really, really want to win at this racetrack, because I'm the one that built the track and I want to win at my own track. By the way, in the comments section, Leave a guess as to how many attempts it's going to take me to win at this racetrack. Also, don't forget to rate and subscribe and uh, join my Discord. Link is in the description. This is T. Chapman 500 signing off.